And why shouldn't the likes of Abu Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala who cry on hearing a hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself says that the Almighty Allah is saying, Al-Kibriya uridai wal-Azmatu izari man naza'ani wahidan minhuma al-Qaiduhu fi al-Nar ki al-Kibriya uridai majestic pride is my garment. Is my robe. Wal azma tu izari and greatness, bigness, loftiness, splendor. This is my garment. And whoever competes with me for any one of these things, then I will not look at who he is. I will throw him in the fire of hell. Why? Who Allah will be la ilaha illa hu, alim al ghayb wa shahada, who al rahman al rahim. He is the Almighty Allah. No God has the right to be worshipped with He. He is the knower of the seen and the unseen. The most merciful, the most kind. Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu. Al-Malik al-Quddus. Al-Salam al-Mu'min. Al-Muhaymin. Al-Aziz al-Jabbar al-Mutakabbir. Subhanallah amma yushrikun. He is the Almighty Allah. No God has the right to be worshipped Allah. He is the King, the King of all kings. He is the pure, He is the holy, free from defects. He is the watcher over His subjects. He is the giver of peace. He is the giver of security. He is the Almighty Allah. He is the compeller. He is the supreme. Glory is to Allah. Allah is high and above all those that they associate as partners with Him. هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله يما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصوّق له الأسماء الحسنى يصبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم هي is the Almighty Allah هي is the Creator هي is the Maker هي is the Fashioner هي is the Bestower and the Giver of forms to Allah belong the beautiful names and all those within the heavens and the earth glorify the Almighty Allah and recognize His greatness. He is the Almighty and He is the All-Wise. When a child is born, the first words that a child enters, hears when he enters this world, the first message that is conveyed to a child, and the first message that is instilled and inscribed on his heart and mind is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. When this child grows every day from cradle to grave, this child is reminded of one message, the caller calls out, Nuazin calls out, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Or oh, insan, remember, Allah is the greatest and greatness is for Allah. Or oh, insan, respond and acknowledge that Allah is the greatest and greatness is for Allah. Or oh, insan, look around you, every single thing within the heavens and the earth, every single thing within the universe, it testifies and it bears witness to this fact and it will remind you that Allah is the greatest and greatness belongs to the Almighty Allah alone. Look at the creation of man. When you ponder over the creation of man, when you look at the eyes with which he sees, when you look at the ears with which he hears, when you look at the nose with which he smells, when you look at the tongue with which he tastes, when you look at the hands with which he grasps and touch and the head with which he thinks, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you look at something as simple as a rose, have you ever pondered? You will see this every garden, yet this rose never stinks, yet this 
grows, it grows in filth, it grows in soil, it is fed with manure, manure stinks, it grows in an environment of dust and dirt, yet this rose never stinks. When you ponder over this, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you look at the spider's web, and then you look at man, you look at the intelligence of man, and you look at his technology, you look at his advancements, you look at the tools he possesses, yet he cannot equal and make something as simple as a spider's web. You know that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you look at a silkworm, when you look at a bee, when you look at a goat, when you look at a deer, and you realize that all these four animals, all these four things, they eat from the same leaf. They eat from the mulberry. The leaf is exactly one. The color is the same. The taste is the same. The fragrance is the same. Yet one eating this, it produces silk. The second eating this, it produces it produces honey. The third eating this, it gives it gives meat and milk. The fourth eating this, it gives musk. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. When you look above you, Ashamsu wal Qamar bi husban and you look at these great great. great creations of the Almighty Allah, the sun and moon, and you ponder over their fixed courses. The Quran says, Never will the sun go past the moon, and never does the night outstrip the day. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you look at the stars and trees, and you realize that even these stars and these trees prostrate before the Master, prostrate before the Almighty Allah. And these great heavens above, even they are afraid of the Almighty Allah. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you ponder of the verse of the Quran, And you realize that He provides for every single fish and animal in the ocean. He provides for every bird in the sky. He provides for every creature on land, small or big. You will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you look at this great heaven above you, the size of which your mind and my mind cannot even comprehend. Allahu Akbar. And then you look around you, there is not a single pillar, there is not a single pillar for holding this heaven. When you ponder over this, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you ponder over the verse of the Quran, that he has let forth two seas. One sea is of salty water, the other is of sweet water. And these seas meet together. The salty water meets with the sweet water, but the salty water, it doesn't cross onto the sweet side. And the sweet water doesn't cross over to the salty side. When you ponder over this, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. Open the book of Allah and keep on reciting the verses of the Quran. If on this earth, if every tree on this earth was to become a pen and all the oceans would become, were to become ink, the oceans would be exhausted, they would come to an end, but the words of Allah would never come to an end. When you realize this, you know greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you realize how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salatu was salam right from the seabed in the darkness of the ocean, in the darkness of the night, in the stomach of the fish, he calls out, La ilaha illa anta subhanak, inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. And the Almighty Allah hears and responds. When you ponder over this, you know that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you ponder over the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, how Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, he takes four birds, he takes four birds, he slaughters them, and then he cuts these birds into pieces, he cuts them into flesh, and then he takes this meat, he puts them on different mountains, and then he keeps the heads under his feet, and then he calls them in the name of Allah, how this meat gets together, and how these birds without their heads come walking to his feet, and then they take their own heads, and they place it on their shoulders. When you ponder over this, you know that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. When you look at the Niagara Falls, and how it looks like a mountain of water, and then when you ponder over how the sea parted, and it gave way to the likes of Sayyidina Musa salam and the Bani Israel, and how it became two mountains of water, one on either side, and according to the Torah, 600,000 people make this crossing. Who was holding that water?
water, mountains of water. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for Allah, who al awwalu wal akhir, wa zahiru wal batin, wa huwa bi kulli shayin alim. He is the knower of all things. Ponder over the knowledge of Allah and Khuda Qasim here and now. You will begin to prostrate before the Master. Wa ma tasqudu min waraqatin illa ya'lamuha, wa la haqqatin fi zulamatil ard, wa la radbin, wa la yabisin illa fi kitabin mubin. There is not a, there is not a single leaf that falls. Whether this leaf is in the darkness of the Amazon basin, whether this leaf is in the thickness of some jungle, whether this leaf falls from a tree, whether it is on the peak of some mountain. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows the color of that leaf, He knows the size of that leaf, He knows the hour that this leaf fell, He knows the second that this leaf touches the ground. There is not even a grain in the darkness of the earth, but it is in the knowledge of Allah. Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what every female bears and how and by how much these wombs fall short or exceed. Everything with Allah is with a due pro, is, is with is with a, within a due proportion. He is the knower of the seen and the unseen, the most great, the most high. It is equal to him whether one of you conceals his speech or whether one of you declares it openly or whether one of you goes hid by, hidden by the night or goes open by the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it all Ya Bunaya innaha in takum iskala habbatin min khardal fatakun fi sakhratin aw fi samawati aw fi al-ardi ya'ti biha Allah inna Allah latifun khabir or insan even if there's something equal to the weight of a mustard seed and then this thing is inside inside some rock in the darkness of a rock or is inside somewhere in the heavens or the earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he knows of this thing and he will bring it forth on the day of judgment. Why? Because nothing can stay hidden from him. Even if it is equal to the weight of an atom or it is smaller than this, nothing can stay hidden from him. Why? Allah Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. He knows what enters the earth. He knows what comes out from the earth. He knows what descends from the heavens. He knows what ascends to the heavens. Never mind this. You sit here before me and you think you know you know yourself. The Almighty Allah knows you better than yourself. He even knows the fraud of your eyes and what your heart conceives. You sit here listening to the reminder as I address you and the thought that, from the thoughts that are crossing your mind. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows these thoughts before they even cross your mind. This is the Almighty Allah. And when you ponder over the greatness, when you ponder over the knowledge of the Almighty Allah, you will bow down in prostration and you will recognize that greatness belongs to the Almighty Allah. Look at this earth that you live in. Allahu Akbar. Look at the size of this earth. Look at the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created inside this earth. Then ponder over at the speed at which this earth is traveling at this moment in time. As you listen to the reminder, yet you are firm on this earth. It, it has no effect on you. When you ponder over this, the speed at which it is traveling and it has no effect on those that live within it, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. Look at this sun above you. It is a sunny day. Ponder over the sun. Look at the size of the sun. Look at the diameter of the sun. Look at the temperature, core temperature of the sun. Hundreds and thousands, hundreds of times bigger than this earth. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. Then when you ponder over the solar system, you ponder over these planets that you that you learn about in schools. Mercury, Jupiter, Mars, Pluto, Venus, these these planets and then you ponder over that, that our solar system is 30,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah after this when somebody tells you that there are solar systems bigger than our solar systems you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah and then when you ponder and you are informed that there are millions of galaxies within the universe you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah and then when you are informed that you sit here right now that at this moment in time, as you listen to the reminder that, that this, this universe as it stands is being expanded by the second, when you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. And after this, when somebody tells you, yeah, after this, there are seven heavens, the distance between the first heaven and the second heaven is of 500 years. The distance between the second and the third is 500 years. The distance between the third and fourth is 500 years. The distance between the fourth and fifth 
is 500 years. Fifth and sixth is 500 years. Sixth and seventh is 500 years. Allahu Akbar. You will recognize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah and Allah alone. And after this, if somebody was to tell you, after this comes the kursi of Allah. The distance between the seventh heaven and the kursi is of 500 years. And all these heavens put together in comparison to the kursi are nothing. They're like a ring in the desert. After you will, when you ponder over this, you will realize that greatness is for the Almighty Allah. After this, if somebody was to tell you, after this comes the arch of the Almighty Allah. At the arch of the Almighty Allah, the seventh heavens and the kursi put together in comparison to the arch of Allah is nothing. It's like a ring in a desert. When you ponder over this, you will realize that there is greatness for the Almighty Allah. Then when somebody tells you, yeah, after this, there are angels carrying the arch of Allah. And such is the state of these angels. Their heads are above the seven heavens and their feet are firm in the lowest earth. And the distance between the elo, Allahu Akbar, look at the distance between our elo and our neck. It is nothing. The distance between the elo and the neck of these angels is such that it would take a bird 700 years to cover this distance. When you ponder over this, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. After the us, when somebody comes and tells you there are 70,000 waves of nur and darkness, when you ponder over this, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. And all this, what I've told you now, and what I've talked about, the heavens, the earth, the solar system, the galaxies, and the universe itself. If somebody was to tell you, Allahu Akbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has such power that all that I have mentioned, He can put it to an end within a trillionth of a second. You will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when you ponder over the day of judgment and you ponder over the verses of the Quran, that the whole earth, Allahu Akbar, this earth will be grasped in his hand. Can you imagine like calling a tennis ball and playing about with it and throwing it up and down? This earth will be grasped by the Almighty Allah on the day of judgment. And these seven heavens, which I've just told you how big they are, your mind cannot get over this. My mind cannot even comprehend the size of the heavens. The Quran says, that these heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. And the Almighty Allah will say on the day of judgment, Anil Malik, Aina Mulukil Ard, that I am the king, I am the king of all kings. Where are the kings of the dunya today? Where are your Gorbachevs? Where are your Bushes? Where are your Blairs? When nobody answers, everybody will be dumbfounded. Everybody will be speechless. Everybody, their heads will be on the floor. There will be prostration. When you see this on the day of judgment, you will acknowledge Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest and greatness is for the Almighty Allah. Then when you think of the Hashar, when you think of the resurrection, how the Almighty Allah will bring back every single creation, every single thing that the Almighty Allah will cre uh, has created, how He will put it back together. When you ponder over this, you will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. Even if somebody was to drown in the ocean, for example, somebody was to drown inside the ocean, he's died inside the ocean, millions of different fish come and they come and they eat from his flesh and then these fish go and there is nothing remains except for bones. Then the waves come and they take these bones and they throw them onto land. They throw them onto shore. The bones have been there for days. The bones have decayed. Come a few days after the camels come and the camels eat from here and then the camels in turn drop droppings and then what happens is a group of people come and they take these droppings and they use them as fuel. A fire is lit. After a while the fire is put out. Come the wind and it takes these ashes and it throws them to different corners of the world. Allahu Akbar, come the sound of the horn, come the command of Allah. And those that are inside their graves and those that died in this manner, فَإِذَاهُمْ قَيَامُ يَنْذُرُونَ In the eyes of Allah, they will be equal and He will gather them exactly the same. And they will be standing and they will be looking on. When you ponder over this, you realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah. Then when you ponder over the gathering, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make every living being that has ever been created, how Allah Allah will make them together on a flat white plain. It will be the it will be the greatest congregation ever seen. Can you imagine every man that Allah ever created will be on that plane of resurrection? Every woman that Allah ever created will be on that plane of resurrection. Every male jinn that Allah ever created will be on that plane of resurrection. Every female jinn that Allah ever created will be on the plane of resurrection. It will be the greatest congregation ever seen. The, the humankind will number in billions. Can you imagine the earth will be like 
like rubber, the way it is expanded, the earth will be expanded and every living being will be on the plane of resurrection. The humankind will number in billions. The jinns will be hundreds and thousands of times more than the humankind and they will be on the plane of resurrection. Can you imagine how many billions of people and how many billions of jinn will be on the plane of resurrection? It will not come to an end. So manazala ahlu samai dunya and then the angels of the first heaven will descend and the angels of the first heaven there will be hundreds and times more than the whole of mankind the humankind the jinn kind put together and these angels will descend from the heavens and when the angels are close to the dunya allahu akbar mankind see on seeing the angels will begin to call out afikum rabbuna is allah amongst you and you will fall flat on the plane of resurrection you will fall in prostration can you imagine this can you visualize this there are billions and billions of you humankind jinn kind millions and billions of angels are descending from above and all the mankind every body that Allah has ever created is in prostration when you ponder over this you will realize that the greatness is for Allah this is just the beginning because after this the angels of the second heaven will the seven descend the angels of the second heaven will be hundreds and thousands of times more than the angels of the first heaven then the angels of the third will descend and there will be hundreds of times than the angels of the second the angels of the fourth will descend the angels of the fifth will descend the angels will of the sixth will descend the angels of the seventh will descend the hadith states that every time the angels descend from the heavens there will be hundreds and thousands of times more than the angels that were before them and these angels they will be more stronger than the angels before them they will be more braver than the angels before them they will be more in number than the angels in before them they will be more in harshness they will be more in severity they will be more in rigorism, there will be more in forcefulness. Can you imagine on that day how many angels will descend? When you ponder over this, you will realize when you ponder over all this creation that Allah has created, you will ponder, you will realize that greatness is for the Almighty Allah. And then when you think that amongst these angels will be the life of Sayyidina Jibrail alayhi salam, he is just one angel. The hadith states, he has 600 wings. One wing is such that it is bigger than the east and west put together. And from his wings fall diamonds and emeralds and, emb and embellishments. The limits of which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Such an angel that he has such strength. That it is narrated. He picked up all the cities of Sayyidina Nud on one wing. All the cities with all the people, hundreds and thousands of them, with their buildings, with their possessions, with their animals and he took them right to the heaven, so close to the heaven that the hadith states, Hatta Samiatil Malaika, Kilaba Hatta Samiatil Malaika, Niba Kilabihim, Wasiha di Katihim, he took them so close to the heaven that the angels heard their dogs barking and the angels heard their roosters crowing. He took them so close to the heaven and then he turned it for Ja'ala Aliha Safilaha and he threw them down to earth. Amongst them will be angels like Sayyidina Jibrail who possess such strength. Amongst them will be angels like Sayyidina Israfil. Sayyidina Israfil possesses such then that he is the one who is carrying the horn. One ring of the horn is so big that in the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it is stated that one circle of the ring is bigger than the east and west, west put together. And all the souls will be inside this. Amongst them will be angels like Sayyidina Islam alayhi salam. Can you imagine? Can you comprehend this? Billions and trillions of angels with the whole of mankind on the plane of resurrection. When you ponder over this and you ponder over the strength of the creation of the Almighty Allah, you will realize that Allah is the greatest and greatness is for Allah. After all what I've mentioned, you open the book of Allah and then you see the verse of the Quran, in yisha yuzhidkum wa ya'ti bi khalqin jadeed wa ma zalika ala Allahi bi aziz. That the Almighty Allah, all this creation that I've mentioned has the power to wipe all this creation within a blinking of an eye and replace it all. You will realize that the greatness is for the Almighty Allah.